One of the ways you can tell if a worry thought is something you should pay attention is to just ask yourself, is it a real possibility? And is there any action I can take right now to make a positive difference? Right? If it's a yes and a yes, then maybe you have positive actions you can take and you can actually like just think about it. When you think about it, like if you are trying to make a cup of coffee in the morning and you know, you're, you're worrying around and then you're like, oh my God, did I turn off the stove? Did I leave the kettle boiling? It's a reality-based worry thought, right? But it's something you worry about because yeah, one, you could burn down the house and second, you can do something about it. But if it's a situation where you're like, okay, um, what's the weather going to be like? And I'm trying to control everything. It's not serving you, right? And one of the things people say with so much pride is that, oh, I'm a natural born warrior. I have to worry about things. But like one thing we can start questioning is, okay, let's say that is really who you are. But how is that actually serving you, right? And if you find yourself manufacturing worry thoughts when things are going well, the thing about it is you end up inflicting them on other people. And if you know, you start doing that, then everybody around you kind of has like, you know, like it's it's almost like they, they're just waiting for that situation to happen because y- you just want to kind of indulge misery loves company sort of things. But it's for people with worrying thoughts. It's like, I just want to be able to vent it. I had a situation in my life, actually, where I had a friend who, you know, she would come and tell me things. And I, in my mind, thought that I was supposed to be fixing them. So I would get worried and like, try to come up with a solution. And the moment I realized, like, I didn't have to absorb that energy, and I could just like be a friend and listen and be in compassion and curiosity. It helped me so much because I didn't then join her in worrying, right? And many of us are recovering worry wards and also like people who worry about things all the time. And so I say this with so much compassion is like being aware of like the fact that worry actually chokes the flow of positive energy and that it's actually an upper limit problem for yourself. The thing is like even in relationships, if we show up in that worrying and constant wanting to control things that we're not doing, it's actually a self-fulfilling prophecy because it creates more reason to worry. So number two about how we we self-sabotage is criticism and blame. I don't know about you, but I sometimes find myself in situations where like things are going well in my friendships and my marriage. And then I'm like, oh, what? Like, it's almost like, oh, my God, we're so bored. Like, what can we what can we um, ra- like rattle the, the room, right? And so you're like, oh, I don't like the way this person does that. Or, oh, yesterday you forgot to do this. Yesterday you forgot to take out the laundry. And when you perfect this criticize and blame mechanism, it actually is a way that you don't, like you show that you're not tolerating your current, you know, status quo of like your the love that you want, the creativity that you have and the money and the blessings that you have you just like what is the thing that I can like control right um what Gay Hendricks says is that criticism and blame are addiction they are costly addictions because they're the number one destroyer of intimacy and close relationships when people give the reasons for breaking up with someone the most common one goes something like this I got tired of the constant criticism and blame Right. So it's so important for us to realize that this is an addiction and it's also an upper limit behavior. Right. If you commit to being a person who is not criticizing and blaming, and this is actually a challenge to all of us. Right. You if it's not an addiction, you'll be able to stop right away. But if it's an addiction, it will just kind of creep back into your behavior unconsciously. Like if you were trying to quit smoking and you found a cigarette in your hand. The thing about it is sometimes we don't realize it's not just criticizing other people. It's also self-criticizing, right? So when you're criticizing yourself and criticizing other people, it can be the same effect, right? Again, it, criticism works the same way as worrying that we talked about before. If if you can do something about it, then it's worth thinking about it, right? So if you are like maybe... If it's like if I'm standing on your toe in the elevator, as Gay Hendrick says, right, if I criticize you, of course, it's useful because then you will liberate my toe from being stepped on, right? 
But what we're talking about is chronic criticism and chronic blame because they're never about producing a result. They're all actually self-fulfilling prophecies because you end up creating more problems and more problems and more problems. Number three is, is deflecting. How many of you, when somebody says, oh, I like your outfit, you're like, oh, actually, it's an old dress. And, you know, I've, I've never, you know, I've worn it before last year. That is actually a way that many of us prevent like positive energy from landing, being received and being acknowledged, right? You could simply just say thank you or like maybe your boss says, hey, you did a great job on that presentation and you're like, oh, I ran out of time. I actually left out some important points. And then your boss is like, no, I noticed people are really paying attention. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm glad they were paying they weren't paying too close attention because they would have, have seen more places I messed up. Like you think you're deflecting criticism and instead you could be accepting the appreciation and acknowledge that like that positive energy is coming your way. When we effectively shout out positive energy by deflecting, we actually keep ourselves in the zone of competence. It prevents us from challenging ourselves and expanding our capacity for experiencing positive energy. So pay close attention when you find yourself you know, self-deflecting when people offer you like positive feedback, just just say thank you. Like it's very simple, right? Like you don't have to like think, oh, they're just saying it to be nice. Just be accepting of feedback that is positive and fulfilling and just be like, oh, okay, thank you. I'm Shira Burke Bauer, and you're listening to an excerpt from the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast. You can listen to the whole episode wherever you get your podcasts and look out for new episodes out every Monday. You're doing a great job, Mama. I'll see you next week. Bye now.